Introduction In this Haka Geka video, we trail to the Galagari Transfrontier Park by 4x4 camper with our flying friends Dion and Marie. We share everything we wanted to know before our first trip to the Galagari and we hope this helps like minded travelers to be better informed. We also present some aviation tidbits of the area for those who would like to fly to the Galagari. We tried to fly there a couple of years before, but could not get hold of the right people or information at the time. The reason we are sharing it here. Being there, Tweerefieren. The first night was spent at the Tweerefieren camping site and we explored the rest of the camp. Shop with all the basic necessities and the gas station with petrol and diesel are available. Still figuring out the geese in our camper, then had a cold show in the camper. After a braai, a good night's sleep and light breakfast, we left for Nossop camp. The central ablutions where I had an early morning shower after trying the cold shower in the camper was also designed and well kept. On our way, we took a detour to the Tweerefieren runway. Gert, the ranger at Tweerefieren, opened the gate for us and provided us with some of the information we required. We could only obtain the full information on our return to Tweerefieren at the end of our trip and we will discuss it further there. The contact information and easy plan still did not work. The road to Nossop is well maintained and regularly scraped with only occasional irrigation and sand. A 4x4 isn't really even required. We saw some wild animals along the route. The two picnic spots where you were allowed to skate out of our cars were well placed along the route. We had a brunch at the second spot. And Nosop. On arriving at Nosop, we explored the camp and as it was still quite empty, we could secure a nice big camping site for the two vehicles for the next five days. The ablutions were very clean and well maintained and we decided to use them instead of our own campus bathroom. There are four roads out of Nosop. The first is a one-way 4x4 route reserved for reservations at the Bitterpan Wilderness Camp. The informal border to Botswana was still closed due to lockdown and we could not drive into Botswana. Only the north and south roads were thus accessible to us. We alternated between the two for our morning and afternoon game drives. The northern road had quite a number of serious corrugations quite close to the Nossop camp. We saw quite a lot of animals and birds during our stay here. The sunrises and sunsets were also exquisite. Easy cockpit indicated the runway right next to the camping site and Dion and I went to investigate. This runway is not operational anymore, but from discussions with one of the rangers, a new runway has been constructed, but they are still battling to get the surface hardened for game management operations. Confirmation on the usage of this runway was also only obtained at the end of our trip. The first couple of nights were very cold, we had to wear warm jackets while braying at night, and getting up in the mornings with temperatures up to minus 5 degrees centigrade. After a couple of days the wind direction changed and the days became hotter and we could wear short sleeves at night. We tried to change our booking to some other camps but all the camps were full. After our 5 day stay we left for Mata Mata. 
The road crossing over from the Nossop River to the Alp River goes over many sand dunes and animals are very scarce here. This road even requires less from a 4x4 as its surface is mostly quite hard. The picnic spots were again well spaced and we had brunch at the second one. Along the Alp River bed we spotted more animals and birds. Mata Mata. The campsite at Mata Mata was quite full and we did not have many options for a one night stay over. The facilities here are very similar to the previous two main camps we stayed at, again with clean and well maintained ablutions and washer facilities. The next morning we drove back along the Alp River to Tweerofiren. We again had some beautiful animal and bird sightings. We had our brunch at the second picnic spot at the Achterloone Museum, which we also investigated. Tweere Vieren Back at Tweere Vieren, Dion and I visited the friendly tourism manager Krista. She provided her email address and confirmed, landing is PPR with indemnity and two nights stay in national lights are required for permission. Even the new runway at Nasop will not be available for general landing due to overflying the park at low altitude. Cars are regularly delivered to Tweerefieren from Uppington. Camp personnel can fetch guests at the airfield. Tweerefieren is the only camp with a restaurant, but it was still closed due to the lockdown. Heading back. Dion and Marie left early the next morning for the rest of their flower viewing trip down the west coast. We left slightly later, and after lunch at Oranje Revier Kelders, we investigated a number of campsites in Uppington before booking in at Oranje Revier's campsite where we spent our last camping night right next to the Oranje River, about 15 kilometers outside Uppington. Again, the ablutions were in tip-top condition and we can recommend a stay at Oranje Ris. The next morning we drove to Lavender Lodge in Freiburg, where we were welcomed by Elsa, a friendly owner. After a good night's rest in a well-furnished room with excellent beds and bedding, we had an enjoyable breakfast made by Elsa's husband, Cory. We can strongly recommend a stay over at Lavender Lodge. Our last leg home went smoothly and after unpacking the camper at home, we returned it to a depot in Pannoni. The trip home to home was almost 3000 kilometers. Camper Review 4x4 campers are very scarce, but the camper we hired is designed by and built for SA road trippers, based in Cape Town, with depots in Windhoek and Benoni, and delivery in other areas. They have a wide variety of 4x4s and campers available, but the camper we hired is based on a 4x4 Ford Ranger 2.2 litre diesel and this provides ample power for easy cruising on the main and dirt roads we encountered. The additional fuel tank just makes it very difficult to calculate fuel consumption and remaining kilometre planning and took some time to get used to. All the standard factory built-in indicators for this means nothing. The living quarter is very well designed and built, well equipped and very well maintained. The swivel bed is comfortable, with bedding provided. There is ample packing space, even for our travelling companion, just in case. The fridge operates on an auxiliary 12V battery, which is charged when driving and when plugged into 220V. It is a good size, but the freezing compartment is just a bit small for us, and we had to borrow some freezing space from Dion and Marie. The onboard water, used for washing up shower and toilet, is ample and easily refillable. Water heating is provided by 220V or gas. The heating problem we encountered was just due to swapped around tap indicators. The hiring agreement is very strict and three different insurance options are offered. Being our first trip, we took the highest, most expensive level. We received excellent service with inspecting the vehicle before the time, getting and returning the vehicle early and good handover instructions. 
We can strongly recommend hiring campers in general and these 4x4 campers in particular from SA Road Trippers. Thank you Father God for the privilege of being able to enjoy such an amazing experience.